Uh, folks, uh, it is such a pleasure to be part of this announcement from ISF's own premises. It has happened thanks to the, the generosity and affection of uh, Sri Salil Parikh, the CEO of Infosys, and Sri Nanda Nilekani, the non-executive chairman of Infosys. A nation's progress on the economic and social fronts depend, depends on the quality of scientific and technological research in the country. That's why research in sciences and in technologies is very important for, de for a developing country like India that aspires to join the rank of the developed world. Research thrives in an environment of honor and respect for intellectuals, meritocracy, and the support and approbation of such intellectuals from the society. Therefore, recognizing and rewarding the outstanding research efforts of Indian researchers is necessary. By doing so, we will encourage not only other researchers, but also create role models and inspire young people to consider careers in research. Scientific research is about curiosity, daring, healthy skepticism, and questioning the status quo. It is following George Bernard Shaw's words, and I quote him, he said, most people see things as they are and wonder why. I dream of things that never are, and then say, why not? That, in essence, is what the research mindset is, and that mindset was what led Newton and Einstein to make stunning discoveries. The country has had a healthy run in scientific and technological progress in the last few years. We rolled out COVID-19 vaccine for a billion Indians. These were produced by two Indian firms. This is a remarkable achievement by any standard. The recommendations of Professor Kasturirangan Committee on the new education policy with stellar academicians like Professor Manjal Bhargava have been accepted and rolled out in some form. Professor Gagandeep Kang and several others became fellows of the Royal Society in London. Professor Ashok Sen won the Millennium Prize. These are all very encouraging and happy events that show that India is on a path of progress. Absolutely. But we still have huge challenges. There is not a single Indian institution of higher learning in the top 250 of the world university global rankings 
that was announced in 2022. Even the vaccines we have produced are either based on technology from advanced countries or based on research from the developed world. Consequently, we have still not produced a vaccine for dengue and chikungunya, which have been ravaging us for the last 70 years now. I can say it with authority because I am in some way involved with the project for finding a vaccine for dengue. The death of 66 children in Gambia resulting from an India-produced cough syrup has brought unimaginable shame to our country and has dented the credibility of our pharmaceutical regulatory agency. Do we have a solution? Yes, we have but it's a hard one. But in the end, we'll all be happy that we have chosen that solution, even though that is hard. Many experts feel that our country inability to use research to solve our immediate pressing problems around us is due to lack of inculcating curiosity at an early age, disconnect between pure and applied research, inadequate cutting edge research infrastructure in our higher educational institutions, insufficient grants, and inordinate delays in creating incentives for research on pressing problems, and inadequate fora for knowledge sharing with global research institutions. In my opinion, money is not the primary resource for success in invention and innovation. How else can you explain the success of East European countries in mathematics? In addition to these factors, there are two other critical components for success in research. The first component is to reorient our teaching in schools and colleges towards Socratic questioning and relating what they learn in the classroom to the real world problems around them rather than passing the examinations by rote learning. Even our IITs have become victims of this syndrome thanks to the tyranny of coaching classes. The second step is for our researchers to focus on solving our immediate problems. Such a mindset, in my opinion, will inevitably lead to solving bigger challenges. Let me give you just one profound and most impactful example of such thinking. Professor Shri Narhari is here, and, and I'm sure he and others can truly appreciate what I'm saying. The year 1948-49 saw Berlin blockade. Mathematician George Danzing was asked by his military bosses in the US to use his mathematics to devise a solution for the optimal airlift of supplies to Berlin. Most people of the time thought that it was a mundane, laborious, 
and clerical problem that did not guarantee success. However, Danzig was a genius. He used Vasily Leontief's input-output matrix methodology, came out with a series of constraint-based equations, linear equations, defined a linear objective function, and devised the famous simplex algorithm to solve this problem. The rest, as we say, is history. Today, the simplex algorithm has become the backbone of linear optimization all over the world, not just in the US. Not just that. It has led to further advances in operations research, game theory, inventory optimization, statistical decision theory, and optimal control theory. These areas of research, my friends, have solved literally zillions of practical problems. That is the kind of research mindset that we must inculcate in our children to become useful researchers. We must also provide better facilities to our researchers, absolutely no doubt about it. We must recognize and honor them. We must make them our heroes. They must become role models for our youngsters. It is in this spirit that Infosys instituted the Infosys Prize in 2009. It is our small contribution to the various initiatives currently underway to further the cause of research in India, to secure her scientific future, and consequently, her economic and social betterment. This year's recipients have been selected from amongst dozens of nominations by juries that were headed by some of the most eminent uh, names in the international research. The accomplishments of the winners are in the disciplines of development economics, algebraic number theory, radio astronomy, thermal imaging of oral cancer manifestations, neurobiology of emotion, and constitutional law. These accomplishments are very uplifting for those of us concerned about the advancement of scientific research in India. We are grateful to the jury chairs, Professor Kaushik Basu, Professor Chandrasekhar Khare, Professor Srinivas Kulkarni, Professor Arwin, Professor Mriganka Sur, and Professor Akir Bilgrami, and the members of their respective juries for working so diligently to select such worthy recipients. The winners are some of the best Indian scientific researchers doing their work in India and in some cases abroad. My warmest congratulations to every one of the winners. We salute